Okay, so welcome to this uh, new lecture on mechanical vibrations and uh, today we are going to continue with the topic of rotating unbalance. Now this is also uh, one case of damped force vibration and in this situation uh, we have a rotating machine that contains some sort of an unbalanced mass uh, in it and because of this unbalanced mass or eccentric mass uh, there are some centrifugal forces uh, being generated when this mass rotates and these centrifugal forces will going to uh, create unwanted vibration in most of the cases uh, these inertial forces centrifugal forces because of the eccentricity of a small unbalanced mass uh, will be unwanted the vibrations because of these forces however in certain situations uh, this rotating unbalance can can uh, can become useful for example uh, when you want to design a shake table to carry out some uh, forced vibration experiments and to to design a vibrating hopper or a or a vibrating conveyor then these rotating um, unbalanced situation can can become uh, useful but in general this rotating unbalance will be unwanted because as you can realize that uh, in, in situation when you are dealing with uh, massive machines like steam turbines and gas turbines uh, you know aircraft engines turbojet engines and uh, compressors and pumps so if these rotors contains any unbalance uh, this can create lot of hazard okay lot of unwanted vibration sound and maybe maintenance issues and malfunctionings so the usual practice is to avoid the rotating unbalance so we're going to carry out a similar analysis as we we have been doing in the previous lectures we have a, a situation shown here and in this situation you can see that uh, we have two rotors that are rotating in the opposite direction and we have some springs and dampers attached to this uh, machine that has a mass of capital M and this machine that that has a mass of capital M contains these rotors that are rotating in the opposite direction and each one of these rotor has a small unbalanced mass uh, that is that has a magnitude of M upon 2 located at a distance E that is known as the eccentricity so because of these small masses when when this rotor will going to rotate it will go these masses will will going to create centrifugal forces okay that that will going to act radially outward and so th these forces the centrifugal forces that are given by m upon 2 e omega square uh, as you can realize that the unit of m e and omega square is basically newton so the dimension of this thing is actually newton the, the force the unit is newton the dimension is f so therefore me omega square upon 2 is the centrifugal force that is being generated by this uh, unbalanced mass here acting at the eccentricity e from the axis of rotation so it will be decomposed into two components one is the horizontal component the other one is the vertical component and note that we are only concerned with the vibrations taking place in the vertical direction so so the horizontal component of uh, this centrifugal force will going to balance uh, the horizontal component of this one okay because they are rotating in the opposite directions whereas the vertical component of uh, this centrifugal force will going to act in the downward direction both of them will be in the downward direction so they, their effect will be added so m upon 2 e omega square sin omega t is the total vertical component that is acting in the direction of the vibration vibration response so you should realize that m upon 2 a small m upon 2 is the unbalanced rotating mass e is the eccentricity in this in this situation capital m is the uh, mass of the machine so the free body diagram here tells us that the inertia 
mx double dot capital mx double dot is positive in the downward direction and that is also the direction of the centrifugal forces the vertical component of the centrifugal forces whereas the recovering forces of a spring and damper will going to act in the opposite direction so uh, the next step would be to uh, use the newton's second law of motion in the vertical direction and sum all the forces acting on this rotating machine Okay, so this is the uh, total vertical component of the centrifugal force okay and this force uh, as you can see is the sinusoidal force harmonic fun function of time and because of this force vibrations will going to be generated so we're going to apply the newton second law in the vertical direction submission of f equals to mx double dot so one of the force is this ft minus the recovering force of the spring minus the recovering force of the damper cx dot equals to capital m x double dot and therefore re rearranging this equation will give us uh, this kind of an equation where we can substitute the value of ft as m e omega square sine omega t and this comes out to be this can be written in form of f naught sine omega t so you should realize that f naught here is given by the product m e omega square which i already told you has a unit of force so this equation one is nothing but the equation of forced damped vibration and so therefore the response of this kind of an equation as we have seen in chapter number three right from the beginning is given by this this uh, function capital x cos omega t and since damping is involved so there will be a delay lag minus phi where this x can be calculated from this expression we have developed this expression in in the beginning of chapter number three you should refer to the uh, initial lectures on chapter number three when we started the forced uh, damped vibrations if you are still not familiar with this expression and here f naught is me omega square so we substitute the value of me omega square here whereas phi that is the phase lag is given by tangent inverse of this value divided by uh, this value sorry this value so this this is not small m this is capital m the mass of the entire machine okay so once we we we, we calculate this x and this phi we have the response of the uh, vibration because of the the uh, rotating unbalance so what we do is that we uh, multiply both the sides of this equation by a capital m and take k common from the denominator and then use these substitutions r is equal to omega upon omega n and capital m upon k is uh, one upon the natural frequency squared c omega upon k is to zeta r and so we will going to get this expression mx upon capital mx upon small m e equals to r square under root 1 minus r square whole square plus 2 zeta r whole square okay so so the magnitude of the maximum force transmitted to the rotating unbalance is given by this expression so please remember that as we know that this is the force that is being produced by the rotating unbalance so this is this can be considered as a as an input force and this then represents the magnitude of the transmitted force to the uh, foundation okay because for example you see this uh, this machine has some kind of a rotating unbalance and this is being operated so it has a rotating unbalance it will be it will be vibrating because of this rotating unbalance and because of its isolators connected to its foundation there will be some force transmitted to the foundation please remember that this is not the case of base excitation because 
the foundation is fixed it is not it is not moving on nor it has been given any excitation uh, it is basically receiving vibration from this rotating unbalanced machine and because of these isolators there will be some dynamic force transferred to this foundation okay and this dynamic force the magnitude of this dynamic force that is being transferred uh, to these to the foundation as we all know it, it is termed as the transmitted force is given by this expression so if you notice this expression this is basically the same expression that we obtained in case of uh, damped uh, amplitude ratio okay this m upon uh, delta st sorry not m upon delta st x upon delta st so x upon delta xt that is the static deflection is known as the magnification factor or magnification ratio m and this m in case of damped force vibration was given by this expression so 1 plus 2 zeta r whole square upon 1 minus r square whole square plus 2 zeta r whole square and this is under the root sign so this is the same equation as the equation of magnification factor also you can say if you remember that it is the same equation as you as we as we obtained in case of the uh, transmissibility of displacement so when we were studying the base excitation we developed an expression of transmissibility of displacement and we we saw that the transmissibility of the displacement was given by this expression So if we focus on this uh, equation, this ratio, this m capital M capital X upon a small m and eccentricity E, this is a dimensionless ratio, okay? And this dimensionless ratio is known as the rotating unbalance. And this can be represented as we have seen in all previous cases that some, some these ratios, that is whether you talk about the displacement transmissibility or you speak of the force transmissibility, or the magnification factor all these ratios they were dimensionless and they they can be easily represented in term of zeta and r so again we have seen that the uh, rotating unbalance has been represented in terms of uh, dimensionless parameters r and zeta r is the frequency ratio and zeta is the uh, damping factor so we we, we plot this expression of capital mx upon m small m e that is a rotating unbalance and we notice that irrespective of the damping values irrespective of the damping values shown here you can reduce the rotating unbalance if uh, you have if you are operating at r which is around 0.55 so any value of r that is 0.55 or lower than this then for this case you your rotating unbalance will be less than one that is a good result also irrespective of damping you can notice that if you increase the value of r to higher and higher values okay then what happened that irrespective of the damping all the curves tend to attain or you know tends to reach this value of one okay as you can see here in this diagram in the in this region of the cur curves being plotted here if you increase the value of r continuously then all these curves are basically trying to reach the value of one so the rotating unbalance is one either if you have a very high value of r maybe greater than three or equal to 3 okay or you reduce the value of r uh, less than 0.55 
or maybe equal to 0.55 then you are going to have a value of rotating unbalance that will be 1 irrespective of the damping okay so this means that actually because you know r is given by the ratio omega upon omega n and if if we speak of this uh, you know, this condition then this means that omega upon omega n in order to have rotating unbalance equal to 1 or less than 1 this omega upon omega n must be less than equal to let's say 0.5 uh, okay and this this means that uh, omega must be less than or equal to the natural frequency of your system divided by 2 so you either have to fix the rpm of the machine with this condition okay if you cannot do anything about the natural frequency you cannot change the stiffness and mass of the equipment then you always have to fix the rpm of the machine such that it is less than equal to omega n upon 2 so that you operate in this region and you have the rotating unbalance less than 1 otherwise uh, what you can do is that you can you can you can alter the natural frequency okay so the natural frequency is given by uh, k upon m k is the overall stiffness of your system m is the total mass of the machine that has the rotating unbalance in it so you can always tune the values of k and m to achieve this kind of a uh, inequality so either you operate in this region or you operate in this region you will going to have a rotating unbalance kept at a value of 1 otherwise you will get you will going to have very high values of rotating unbalance and that would be unwanted and you can see that if you reduce the damping these peaks will going to increase so you will going to have higher and higher magnitudes of rotating unbalance if you decrease the uh, damping in in your system the maximum value of the rotating unbalance will going to uh, be found at, at at this expression 1 upon 2 zeta under root 1 minus zeta square and this will going to take place at a value of r that is given by uh, this expression so 1 upon under root 1 minus 2 zeta square if this is the value of r then you will going to have maximum rotating unbalance uh, magnitude okay and this these maximums are actually taking place slightly greater than r equals to 1 as you can see here so the the peaks of this curve are slightly higher than r equals to 1 that is what this expression says so at these values of r the rotating un unbalance in your machine will be highest and this is certainly unwanted if this is the case if you have to operate at this condition then you have to increase the damping in your system and increasing damping can be costly so you can work with these alternatives to to restrict the amplitude of rotating unbalance either you fix your uh, omega or you fix your omega n such that you either operate here in this region greater than 3 or greater than 2.5 maybe okay maybe greater than one uh, sorry maybe greater than two would be enough so you operate in this region by tuning omega or omega n or you operate in this region okay so you can see that critically dam systems are are actually not affected by the rotating unbalance because they are heavily uh, damped systems and uh, the rotating unbalance in critically damped system always remains less than one for the entire range of r so so you have only under damped systems that are more prone to rotating unbalance so we move on to solve this problem Con concerned with the rotating unbalance one of the tail rotor blades of a helicopter has an unbalanced mass of 0.5 kilograms so this is a small m because this is the unbalanced mass 0.5 kilogram at a distance of 
E equals to 0.15 meter. So, so this eccentricity is given 0.15 meter from the axis of rotation. The tail has a length of 4 meter, a mass of 240 kilogram, and flexural stiffness of 2.5 mega newton meter square. So the value of EI flexural stiffness is given. Uh, also, the mass of the tail is given, its length is given, and a damping ratio of 0.15. So this is the value of zeta that is given to us. The mass of the tail rotor blade is 20 kilogram. Now this is the capital M because uh, actually the unbalance uh, in the rotor blade of the helicopter is actually within this 20 kilogram of machine. Okay, So we are claiming that the tail rotor blade is actually a rotating machine that has a mass of 20 kilogram and has a an unbalanced mass of 0.5 kilogram at a distance of 0.15 meter from its axis of rotation. So we need to find the response of the tail of the helicopter if the blade rotates at 1500 rpm. Okay, so this is the situation depicted that is given in the question. We have a cantilever beam, a tail of a helicopter can be modeled as a cantilever beam. The body of the helicopter will be fixed here at this fixed point so we are not con considering the that body of the helicopter we are just modeling the tail so the tail is fixed here and at a distance it, it has a length of four meters so at a distance of two meter its mass or center of gravity is acting so mass of 240 kilogram is acting at its center of gravity it has some kind of a flexure stiffness given by this value and at the free end it has a rotating blades that has a mass of 20 kilogram contains an unbalanced mass of 0.5 kilogram at an eccentricity of 0.15 meter and the blades are rotating at 1500 rpm so this means that the stiffness of the cantilever beam when some kind of a load act at its free end can be given by this expression 3 ei over l cube so this is the stiffness of the of the beam the stiffness of the system and since the mass of the beam is specified, we have to find the equivalent mass acting at the free end. Okay, so for for that we we draw a deflection curve. So this is the two meter length where the mass is acting, and this is the rest of the length. The deflection of the free end is given by x, and at this point, which is the center of gravity, the deflection is x one and the entire length is 4 meters. Uh, so from uh, similar triangles, we can write that x1 upon 2 is equal to x upon 4 and this gives us a value of x1 in terms of x that is the uh, ref deflection of the free and the generalized coordinate of this problem. So x1 is equal to x upon 2 therefore x1 dot will be equal to x dot upon 2 and we need to find the equivalent mass acting at the free end so we have to use the equivalency of kinetic energy of the system therefore half m equivalent x dot square must be equal to the kinetic energy of all the masses appearing uh, in this diagram that is half mass of the beam uh, x1 dot square plus half mass of this machine uh, that that is the mass of the rotor blades Okay, we don't have to consider this mass 0.5 kilogram because it is included here in this 20 kilogram. So half m x dot square. Okay. If we substitute these results, x1 equals to x upon 2 and x1 dot equals to x1 x dot upon 2 in this expression in the equivalency of kinetic energy we will get the equivalent mass as mass of the beam upon 4 plus the mass of the rotor blade and this x1 dot square x1 dot square will be x dot square upon 4 so it is mb upon 4 here mb is 240 so it is 240 upon 4 m is 20 kilogram so the equivalent mass of the system acting at the free end is 80 kilograms so using this value of uh, equivalent mass 
and the stiffness of the system we can find out the value of natural frequency of our system that is 38.273 radian per second and using the value of the rpm that was 1500 we can calculate the uh, excitation frequency omega which is 2 pi n upon 60 uh, so we get the value of excitation frequency omega is 157.079 radian per second and r will then be equal to omega upon omega n which is 4.104 so r is 4.104 it is very high in this somewhere in this region okay so the disp the rotating unbalance okay so if this is zeta 0.15 this curve okay if this curve we are following this curve and maybe at at a value of 4.104 it will try to reach almost equal to 1 so we'll see what is the response okay so for damped force vibrations the response is given by since rotating unbalance actually is a uh, case of force vibration and it is damped so x cos omega t minus phi is the response of the tail and for rotating unbalance we can calculate this x unknown amplitude from the formula of rotating unbalance that we generated here this formula so all the values are known we just have to find the value of x okay so we make the x x our subject and we calculate the value of x as 3.974 raised to power minus 3 meters which is 3.974 millimeters so the tail is basically vibrating uh, we're going to vibrate at an amplitude of 3.974 millimeters if this kind of an unbalance uh, is, is present in the tail rotor blades of the helicopter so 4 millimeters approximately is the amplitude and the second unknown thing is the phi so phi is tangent inverse of 2 zeta r upon 1 minus r square and we can calculate uh, this value also because uh, everything is known 2 zeta r 1 minus r square r is known to us zeta is also known to us we can calculate phi and phi comes out to be uh, 0 0.0775 actually so okay. let us see what is the value of phi here I think there is some kind of a yes So we see that phi comes out to be negative 4.442 degrees and this can be converted into radians which is negative 0.0775 radians. Okay. So phi is negative 0.0775 radians. Therefore if we substitute the value of phi and x okay, that we have calculated in this equation that is the response of the damped force vibration we will get the response of the tail so the response is 3.974 cos uh, 157.079 t plus 0 0.0775 okay, so this minus and this minus will be will then be positive and so finally this is the response of the tail okay now obviously helicopters are a, a very fast rotating machine so you can expect r to be very high and if you think that this kind of a vibration amplitude is permissible allowable then it's fine it's okay but if you want to reduce it more then following these curves what you you will going to do is that you will going to either increase the rpm of the rotor rotor blades more so that this value becomes more small this these curves will reach almost one 
ओके और व्हाट व्हाट यू कैन डू आई मीन यू कैन नॉट चेंज द मास ऑफ द टेल और द द स्टिफनेस ऑफ द सिस्टम यू कैन नॉट डू मच अबाउट दैट सो स्पेशली यू कैन नॉट यू नो एल्टर द मास बिकॉज इट्स अ फ्लाइंग ऑब्जेक्ट सो आई थिंक यू हैव टू प्ले विद द ओमेगा एक्साइटेशन फ्रीक्वेंसी द आर पी एम आर पी एम ऑफ द रोटर इफ यू इंक्रीज द आर पी एम ऑफ द रोटर यू कैन रिड्यूस द दिस वाइब्रेशन बिकॉज दिस कर्व विल दैन रीच ऑलमोस्ट वन सो दिस दिस वॉज ऑल फॉर टूडेज लेक्चर एंड इन दैक्स्ट लेक्चर वील गोइंग टू स्पीक ऑफ सम मोर टॉपिक्स रिलेटेड विद चैप्टर नंबर थ्री थैंक यू